bit more active and then head to some really nice feel good posture. So we're gonna start in a lunge. Go ahead and come into a kneeling position. Bring your right foot forward. Good. Nice steady base. Feet are on train tracks. You're not on a balance beam. Nice neutral pelvis, meaning you're not spilling your bowl of soup forward. You're not spilling your bowl of soup back. Nice and neutral. Natural curve of the lumbar spine. Back toes untucked or tucked, whatever you prefer. You have a nice press down with that back knee, nice press down with that front heel. And then start to sink, keeping your pelvis upright. A nice sink of that front knee. You may not be able to go very far depending on hip flexor mobility, but it's important to remember the hip flexors are designed to lift the leg. They're meant to be pretty strong. They're not meant to be made of rubber. Um, it's definitely good to stretch them out, but we still want them to have some, have some tensile quality to them. So don't worry if your hips don't slam to the ground, especially with this more upright pelvis position. Good, and hugging the shoulders back and down. The more you are kind of lifting the heart and lengthening the front body, you're actually gonna help intensify uh, the stretch. Good, and then from here, bring your left hand down to the outside of your mat and walk your back leg back a little bit more so you're in a much a long, more elongated stance, drop the back knee. Reach your right arm up to the ceiling, take a breath in. Exhale, reach back for your back foot and bend your knee. Now, depending on how tight you are, you may be here, and this is an okay place to be. You're still stretching the front of the leg and you're working on strengthening the back of that hamstring. If possible, curl that leg enough to where you can find the pinky toe side of your foot. Hug your shoulders away from your ears and lift your chest. So you're getting a really nice stretch through the front of that quad, front of that hip. If you're able to, a little bit of an arch of the spine is then going to continue that front body stretch. And then you can slowly start to maybe pull your heel in towards your glute. As you can see, I like to move my hand a little bit more to the top of the foot because it's difficult for me to comfortably bend my elbow like this. Um, so for me, I like to bring it inwards a little bit. And then just like we did when we foam rolled, a little exploration. I like to, ooh baby, turn a little bit one way, turn a little bit to the other, kind of like rolling onto the inside and the outside of your knee. Good, come to neutral, take a breath in. Exhale, slowly release the foot down. Whoo, all right. From here, we're gonna turn to the long side of our left, the left long side of our mat, turning our left shin bone in. You're gonna bring your left hand next to your left knee on the, on the back of your mat. Then you're gonna sweep your right arm up and overhead, coming into gate pose. Nice big stretch of that side body here, which can get really crunchy as you ride. Maybe see if you can give your hips a little press forward and let the head peel back, open the heart. Good, inhale, sweep the right arm down, back forward through center, coming into a long lunge or a runner's lunge. This is where you may want blocks. Maybe, maybe not. I like to use them for a little support, a little moral support. On your inhale, lengthen your heart, lengthen your spine. I want you to think about that neutral pelvis we created in that lunge. So we're not really rounding here. If you're like this, then I need you to bend your knee. If you're like this, with your butt sticking out, you might be overstretching your hamstrings, though if you're an avid cyclist, you may not have that issue. Good, so nice long spine, neutral pelvis, navel drawing upwards, and then fold. So cycling is a really good uh, balancing exercise with yoga, but we also have to remember that if we really, really want to get powerful on the bike, we might not be able to do the splits. That sometimes we have to have, and that, again, it can be totally genetic, the length of your hamstrings. There are people who are super strong in the hamstrings who can do the splits. But there are also people where it's a give and take. You sometimes need to know that not everything is going to be possible depending on what your goals are. And that's totally okay. That's why we stress in yoga so much. It's not about what the shape looks like. It's about what you feel. It's about what your intention is. It's about what your personal goals are for your body. 
Good, inhale, lift your chest up. Exhale, bend your front knee over your front ankle. So you're in a nice low, long lunge, but then untuck your back toes. Bring your hands to your instep of your front foot. Bring your front foot towards the right a little bit more so that your toes are turned to a 45 degree. A nice lizard lunge. You can choose to stay upright. Again, this is gonna be a little bit more for the hip flexors. The more upright you are, the more towards the back bend shape you get. You can imagine from the, the front of my big toenail all the way up through the shin bone, through the thigh, through the hip, through the belly, through the chest. I'm pulling on that front body, which is typically hunched over. Oh, I'm getting a really nice hip flexor stretch here. For those of you who want to get a little bit more into the outer hip of that front leg, you can start to do the opposite lower down, which is going to help really intensify that capability of hip flexing on this side. I naturally can hip flex really, really easily. I fold in half quite well. So this is my personal preference for today. Sometimes it changes though. But just take one more breath. And then exhale, bring your hands down, bring your foot back to the center of your mat, tuck your back toes. Step your right knee back to your kneeling position and rise up, good. Other side, let's step our left foot forward. A nice neutral tall lunge. So you can see we're in this more 90-90 shape rather than boom. Nothing really wrong with this, not what we're doing today. Neutral pelvis is gonna help keep that integrity of that front of the hip. Toes can be tucked or untucked in the back. Draw your navel in, neutral pelvis. And then keep all that, start to sink your front knee down a little bit more. If you find that you need a little bit more space, just swiggle your front foot forward. I'm a little bit more flexible on this side. You should feel your back glute is strong, helping to support your back. A nice active press down with both of your feet. So your muscles are engaged in supporting you while you're opening a little open of the chest. Draw your shoulder blades back. Maybe chin up. Good, inhale. Exhale, bend your front knee a little bit more. Bring your right hand to the right side of your mat. Tuck your back toes, lengthen your back leg as far as you can, and then lower the knee back down. Inhale, left arm up. Exhale, reach it back. Bend your right knee. Again, if you're here, hang out here. Good place to be. You can use a strap, but that's a little bit more uh, of a passive thing to do, which is okay. It's not bad, but this is really going to be beneficial. You're strengthening your hamstring, you're lengthening the front of your leg. Or ooh, maybe see if you can grab the toes. Good. You know, a little bit of a maybe press down through the knee, press down through the front foot, lift your heart away from the floor, chin away from the chest. Hips are really nice and heavy. Maybe you start to bend your elbow drawing your heel towards your glute. Oh boy, maybe a little rocking forward and out. I'm feeling really tight on this side today. So I'm just gonna hang out in stillness because that's what my body's asking for. Gonna come back to neutral, take an inhale. Exhale, slowly release the foot down. Bring your both hands down to the instep. We're going to turn to the long edge of the right side of our mat. Coming into that gate pose, right shin bone turns off the mat. Right hand to the back of the mat. Inhale, open up. Feel yourself open. Push down through everything, making contact with the ground as you drip your upper body downwards. Maybe push the hips forward, chin away from the chest. Inhale. Stay for the exhale. Good. Slowly come back down. Turn back to the front of your mat. Straighten your front leg. Back hip is stacked over the back knee. Maybe use your blocks here. Good. Inhale. Lift the chest, lengthen the spine. Nice neutral pelvis here. We're not sticking the butt out and we're not here. If you're here, bend the knee until you can lengthen the back. Take an inhale, exhale, fold. 
We're keeping that front foot flexed, so we're still getting into those calves. Good, inhale, lift up. Bend your front knee over your front ankle, hands to your instep. Wiggle your left foot forward into the left slightly. Untuck your back toes. And your choice, you can lower down to lizard lunge, which is gonna help get some deeper hip flexion on that left side. Might get into your outer hip a bit. Or you can create a little bit of a swoopy back bendy shape to help get into that right hip flexor. Remember, we're staying active here. We're still firmly pressing our feet down into the mat. Using that energy is like reverberation. The more you push down, the more you're going to get energy to lift up. The more energy, the more nourishment you're bringing into your body. Shoulder blades down and back wherever you are, even if you're folded forward. Good, one more breath. And then slowly lower down, tuck your back toes, and send your front foot back to meet the right. Come onto your back, take a block with you. Feet hip width distance apart. Those of you with sensitive knees, bring your feet a little bit wider and turn your toes towards the sides of your mat. Lift your hips and slide your block on the medium setting. Try the medium setting first, and if it's too high, go ahead and lower it to the lower setting. Avoid the highest setting for now um, because we're going to take some variations of bridge pose and I don't want you to be in that and in the instability of how of the higher block setting for that. Hands can be anywhere that's comfortable. I really like hands to hip points, but you can bring your arms out and give a little tuck of the shoulders under there if you're needing a little bit of a chest opening. That can also feel really good for those with sensitive necks as it's going to help bring that curve back to the C-spine. This is one of my favorite poses to spend time in after cycling because it's gonna help stretch the front of the hip flexors. So let's take it up a notch. Bring your left knee in towards your chest. Doesn't have to be super deep. And then straighten your right foot out. And then firmly press through your front heel forward and down. And by having the left knee in, we're keeping our pelvis neutral so that we can really accentuate that stretch. Go ahead and switch. Start by bringing your right foot in. Lower your left, left foot down. Switch sides. Right knee comes in. Straighten your left leg out. Give a nice, good, firm press through that left heel. Start by sliding the left foot in, lower the right leg down. Lift your heels up, press down just enough to lift the block out from underneath your hips. Good. Bring your hands behind the knees, give yourself a little bit of a hug, a little rock side to side. 